Your Apple Watch comes loaded with a lot of amazing features, but some of these features you need to turn these off because not only do they take up storage space on your device, but these are kind of like bloatware that Apple has enabled for us by default. Let's go into our Apple Watch settings. Let's go start off in the general tab as a excellent one can be found in the background app refresh. By having this off, this will allow your background apps you just exit out of to just turn off instead of still be running in the background. So if you're trying to save a little bit more juice, turn that off and you'll be good. Now let's go back and go into the return to clock section. In here, by default, it's gonna be selected to always. An example how this setting works is if you launch an app on your Apple Watch, and then you put your wrist down, you know it will automatically go back to your watch face. If you like to set up your watch so it could actually resume on the app that you last left on, you can select after an hour as that is the longest duration you could have this enabled. So now whenever you put your wrist down, that app where you last left on on is still gonna resume back. I like it leaving it like this because sometimes when I'm operating my garage, I do tend to move my wrist down. And once I'm in my garage, I'm able to close it right here with, without going into my app library and going in and to select it. Now returning back in nightstand mode, this is a cool one, but sometimes we don't all need one. If you already have a nightstand, like a clock or some sort, you don't need your Apple Watch to display you the time, so you may want to turn this off. So you can locate that setting right here. Now screenshots. By default, this is turned on, and sometimes it could be useful and sometimes it's just annoying, especially if you're like me who always constantly accidentally press on the two buttons to take a screenshot, and will end up filling up your photo library on your iPhone with a bunch of screenshots of your Apple Watch. If you like to disable this, you'll find it right here, and just turn that off, and now that annoyance is no longer there. Now for privacy and security, it's always good to once in a while go into the profile section right here and see if you have any existing beta profiles or some type of profiles you installed for your work or old job you may had because in here is where you could go in and manually disable those. And there are some bad people out there. They could actually modify existing profiles to allow them to have more access to your device, somewhat like malware. So it's good to always go in, double check, and make sure your device is clean of anything that you know of. Unless it's a, like a beta profile, there really shouldn't be anything here. Now next up is a interesting debatable one. And I really am excited to show you this because I found out a better way to operate your Apple Watch. But before you do that, make sure to leave a like because that is a great way to allow other people to also see this great video. But back in the, still in the general tab and you scroll up where it says orientation, click on here and where you see the digital crown, I like to personally have my digital crown on the left side. The only reason why I have it on the right side is just for viewing purposes on this video because this is the proper way to view an Apple Watch from Apple's marketing, but realistically, I highly recommend experimenting with the digital crown on the left side because I find this to be the ideal method to fully operate your Apple Watch. As you see here, I can use my thumb to easily operate the digital crown because this is the comfortable spot where my thumb will always rest. And my pointing finger is up here where I could have quick access to the upper portion of the screen. This also prevents me from accidentally like toggling SOS if my wrist taps the button if I'm like heavy lifting something. So I highly recommend giving that a shot. Now getting out of the general tab, in the focus tab, if you go all the way on the very bottom, you could enable it so it mirrors your iPhone. So whenever focus mode is enabled, a focus mode is enabled on your Apple Watch or your iPhone, both your two devices will automatically sync. But if you like to have these two devices be separate, just disable it right here. Now another one can be located in airplane mode. So in airplane mode, there's a airplane mode mirror behavior. By default, you will see that the Bluetooth is enabled. But those that don't have a built-in cellular or don't have their cellular version Apple Watch activated, you want to also go ahead and turn on Wi-Fi because like our iPhone, whenever we enable the airplane mode, our Wi-Fi remains on. So you don't want that to also happen with your Apple Watch. So I like leaving Wi-Fi so I can still have Wi-Fi connectivity when available in an airplane. Now going back, if we scroll down to brightness and display, here not only can you change the text size if you like, but if you go all the way down, some people don't like to have their always on display on their Apple Watch enabled. So if you have an Apple Watch that supports always on display, you can turn that off right here. But if you're like me who likes always on display, you just don't like others to have quick access to your display to see private information and such. If privacy is more your concern, if you scroll down where it says wrist down complications, where it says the complication data, you could turn this off. So now if we go back and cover up our wrist, all the complications that we have, like our weather, our activity, is just grayed out. 
And if we go back, you can enable it or disable certain apps. You just don't want anything to pop up right here. So that's a nice in the middle setting. Additional ones, so if we go back right here and you scroll down to where it says watch duration. Now by default, your Apple Watch screen duration will only last up to 15 seconds. Then the screen will go back to its low power mode but you can actually extend it to 70 seconds. So if you're somebody who has a hard time of reading things or seeing small objects, I would recommend leaving it at 70 seconds, but I personally still like leaving it at 70 seconds because I like the capability to see my display much longer because I'm in control when the Apple Watch should go back into its low power screen mode. Especially if you also charge your Apple Watch daily. I'm always able to get more than a whole day under a single charge, especially with the Apple Watch Ultra. So this works fine with me. Moving along, back here in gestures, if you have an Apple Watch that supports the double tap gesture, this is where you go in and turn this on or off, which allows you to answer phone calls, pause your media, or answer an incoming call, or dismiss a timer by just simply doing your tap, you know. But this isn't exclusive to the Ultra 2 nor the Series 9 because there isn't a clever way to enable this. I go more into detail in this video over there, but stick around. I have it also linked in the description down below so you can watch it later, as well as an end card. But where it says cover to mute, I like having this ability enabled due to the fact that whenever I'm receiving an incoming call or a notification comes in, I could just cover my watch and it'll automatically put my device on silent if it's not already. So definitely do consider leaving this one on. Now moving into the Wi-Fi tab, if you scroll all the way to the very bottom where it says ask to join Wi-Fi, if you have a significant other or a family plan or a close friend that's a part of your contact list and you forget your iPhone, let's say, and you're traveling along with them in their car, your Apple Watch and their device will actually pop up a little display saying, would you like to share your hotspot to this person's Apple Watch? It's cool, but also kind of annoying at times to have that screen popping up automatically. So if you like to disable this, you'll find it right here where it says ask to join. Just select never. And now that situation will never happen. Now in notifications, another privacy thing you could do is scroll down to where you see tap to show full notification. By default, this is turned off, but by having this on, instead of showing you the message, it will actually just tell you the person that's sending it to you and the app that that notification was received in. So like iMessage and you could tap to actually view the body or you could just view it from afar and don't even bother tapping on it to see the full body of the message. So if you like to give yourself a bit more privacy power, you can enable that right there. Additional thing can still be located in the display and brightness. If you scroll down where it says wake to wrist, it's self-explanatory, you can enable this. So when you raise your wrist, your Apple Watch will remain on. But if you turn this off and you raise your wrist, you have to manually tap on the display to see, to wake up your display basically. But I like leaving the wake on crown rotation. By having this enabled, basically, whenever your Apple Watch is like in this dim screen mode, you can use the digital crown to wake it up. Comes in handy in those type of situations, especially when theater mode is enabled. But the thing about the digital crown is you feel that haptic feedback like gear feedback that it gives you whenever you're operating it to scroll, you can actually disable this to help increase the battery life even more. So if you like to disable this, if you don't feel like this is a necessary feature, here's where you go ahead and do that. In the sound and heptics, scroll down where it says crown heptics, disable it, and now you no longer have that vibration. And this is a known fact from Apple, as they stated multiple times in the past that by disabling this, this will help aid the battery life to be able to last even longer. But if you don't care, you charge it daily like I do, you may want to also be aware of that the heptic alerts, you could actually make it even stronger. If you feel like you've been missing some notifications while your app watches on silent, if you feel that the default vibration strength isn't strong enough for you, you can select prominent and it'll give you a little feedback example how that's like. This way, you're guaranteed not to miss a notification. Going back and going to the SOS tab, Here's what you enabled fall detection. Fall detection, unless you're the age of 55, this will be enabled by default. But if you're younger than that age, this will be turned off. So you have to go in here to enable that. In addition to that, if you scroll down by default, this will only go on during your workout. So if you have a workout activated and you trip and fall, 
and you're unresponsive, your Apple Watch will get a hold of emergency dispatchers as well as your emergency contacts. But what you want to go ahead and do is select always on this way for any situations. If you're a dirt biker, you were riding solo, you fall off and you're unresponsive, your Apple Watch will dial 911 and your emergency contacts and send them your, to your location via iMessage. That's how it works. I like personally having this on because if I do accidentally toggle this, while doing like daily chores, which does happen like once a year, I will get a false alarm. This notification is super loud to disable it as like a five to 10 second timer will start up, letting you to respond or else it'll get a hold of emergency dispatchers. Never once was an issue, which is why I'm recommending at least turn this on and just have that peace in mind. And then this is where you could go ahead if your Apple Watch is equipped with it, you'll be able to find your crash detection as well, which this is enabled by default. Moving out the SOS tab and now we are in battery. In the battery tab, if you tap on battery health, make sure your Apple Watch has battery charging optimization enabled. But if there's a situation where you're trying to charge your Apple Watch to 100% and you notice that it's stuck at 80%, it's due to the fact that this is turned on. It's probably due to the fact that your Apple Watch is a little bit too hot to safely charge it without causing any battery cells to get damaged. So that's why it's stuck at 80%. But if you go in here and you turn that off, it will immediately start charging up to 100. That's how you can do those emergency charge. I personally would recommend leaving your, this on because this will give you the longest lasting battery longevity. But I do understand there's times you just want to charge at 100% and you want to make that sacrifice. So that's how, where you go in and again, turn that off. Now moving out of there and scrolling down into the app store. Whenever I download an app on my iPhone, sometimes it is annoying seeing that app also installed on my Apple Watch, which is why I prefer having automatic downloads disabled. This way, my Apple Watch app library doesn't get cluttered with a bunch of unnecessary apps unless I want to actually download it on the app store on my Apple Watch. I like having that off to free up space and not use my internal storage space on my Apple Watch and just keep it on my iPhone because not all apps belong on the Apple Watch. And then down here, automatic updates, leave this one on, it makes your life so much more easier, especially on the Apple Watch. But what is annoying and does feel like bloatware is the mindfulness app. I do understand some people do use them, but for me personally, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one, I find that mindful app kind of annoying. And there's a something that I really don't like about this. So this is where you could turn off the reminder for the day and the end of the day. And if we scroll down, I like to also turn off weekly summary as that is also annoying. But if you scroll all the way to down to the audio meditation section, notice how this is turned on. Because whenever you dock your Apple Watch to charge, it downloads audio files, taking up storage space on your Apple Watch. Even after you turn off all those other notifications off, it still ends up being an active app, downloading stuff offline and won't clear out those libraries unless you listen to those audio logs. So turn that off so it doesn't use up any storage space on your Apple Watch if you don't use this app. Another app that's very similar to this is the podcast app. In here, where it says up next, depending on the section that it selects, I believe it was on 10 episodes, it will offline 10 of your most listened to podcasts and will not delete unless you listen to it. So have this off so it doesn't download anything offline. And then in the save episodes, by default, mine will select the up three episodes. Same story, turn that off. This way your Apple Watch storage isn't just filling with a bunch of podcasts. And there you guys have it. Those are the best settings to definitely consider turning it off and settings to definitely be aware of to really personalize the Apple Watch for your lifestyle. Now, if you'd like to know what are some cool apps for the Apple Watch for the month of April, check out this video over here where I go through everything. And then over to there, that's that video I was telling you about earlier on how you can activate double tap on an Apple Watch that does not support it. Thank you so much for watching.